Okay, so what do you do if you take a measurement in a room and it looks like this, but you need to do a crossover alignment? I don't know. This is a big mess. So long story short, I have an idea for you and it goes like this. Take several measurements, average them together, and then use that average to do your crossover alignment. Now I've tried this in the past and it has not worked out very well for me, but what I'm doing differently now is I'm being really specific about where I place the microphone. So that's mainly what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. So if you ever struggle getting actionable data in the low end when you are taking your measurements and you're trying to do your alignments, that's what I'm gonna try and help you with today. So my friend Ian at Gare Audio in Canada helped me out with doing these tests because he has a warehouse with some Lena and some 900 LFC in them. So we started back here at microphone position eight and we just took a couple of solar measurements and this is also where we did the alignment. So we did the alignment at this position using subaligner and then we measured at all of these microphones and we measured at each microphone position solo systems. And at each position, we reset the delay locator for the main, but of course not for the sub because we want to look at how well the alignment is doing between the two. So I don't know about you, but I am not great at reading noisy measurements. And this one honestly isn't even really that bad, especially compared to that other one that I started this video with. Um, if you took some time and you are not in a hurry and you have some experience, then you could probably look at this and say, hey, I see the trend line here. I see that these guys are pretty much aligned through here, so this really should be fine. And then you might call it a day. But many times this is worse, right? And this is really hard to read and it basically becomes inactionable. Um, or maybe you have less, less experience and even this is too much noise for you to really see what's going on. Take a look what happens if we take a bunch of measurements. So I have eight here, I'm not gonna open them all up. But if I open just their averages on top of them. So here's the Lena in pink and the 900 LFC in orange. And hopefully you see all of a sudden that that's a lot easier to look at. So if I hide those solo measurements, this right through here, through the crossover region, wow, that gets a lot cleaner, right? So hopefully you can see now that there is really this trend line going through here. I guess another added benefit is that we checked in uh, many more places in the audience than just one to see how the alignment was changing over the audience. So there's nothing special about this. All we did was take eight measurements and then average them together. But what we did, what was special, I think, is where we placed the microphones. So. In this article, I outline exactly how to do this. So I wrote this article called Don't Align Your Subwoofer to a Room Reflection, and it has a slightly different goal in the article. But one piece of the article is that I talk about the strategy for microphone placement in case you want to do this kind of average to try to like see through the noise and see if your alignment is working. So let's look down at the steps. Uh, here's all the measurements together, by the way. So eight measurements of the main, eight measurements of the sub, and then you can see, you know, there's the average on top of it. There's the average we just looked at. And here's the average uh, compared to our results from Subaligner. So uh, maybe you know that in Subaligner you can export the results and then you can import them into your audio analyzer. So uh, if I hide everything and bring in the Lena and the 900 LFC, here's what they might look like if you imported those traces from Subaligner. And what's helpful there is that if, if your measurement is really noisy, so let's say if we just go back to this guy, let's say you didn't have time to take eight different, you know, uh, measurements and average them together, then this can really be a lifesaver to help you see through the noise and see like, oh, okay, this, this is really the trend going through here. Anyway, um, what was nice is to see how how well also that, that these averages connected with the results from Subliner so that we could really have confidence and say like, okay, yes, our alignment is working. Yes, Subaligner is working. Everything seems to be agreeing. Okay, that was just kind of a side note. So back to the microphone position. So in order for this average to work, 
um, you need equal number of microphones basically on each side of the coupling zone. What does that mean? Maybe it would be helpful to open up Merlin Van Veen's subaligned calculator. So this is a pretty boring thing going on here, right? So we're looking at this design of just a warehouse where the phase span from the beginning of the audience plane to the end of the audience plane for this particular sound system setup is only 10 degrees, as it says right here. Um, so we really couldn't do anything wrong. So that's why we just place the microphones evenly through the audience. Now, what might happen differently is if uh, you had a larger span and then you would really need to change this around. So I made another example design here to show what would happen if you raise those speakers up higher. So if you take this, if you take that same design in the warehouse, but just move the Lena up to, you know, geometric midpoint of about 20 feet instead of 10 feet. So you double the displacement between main and sub. Now we have a slightly bigger problem. Um, let's look at what that would be like. So these are about 20. So over here in the calculator, we just change the height here from uh, 3.1 from 3.1 to 6.2 that should be 20 feet now we have a phase span of 233 degrees and so in this case we probably don't want to align at the back of the audience because then we are putting you know the front part of our audience into a null here which you can also see over in this graph over here um, sorry i'm not doing a great explanation of the subaligned calculator um, merlin has a great video about it that i'll link to below below this video and i think i I talk about it in some other videos, but super helpful calculator. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the difference here. So we have a phase span of 233 degrees. So I'll make my alignment position 233 divided by 2. And now when I hit split the difference, it's going to give me an alignment position here that puts 120 degrees of phase misalignment on this side and 120 degrees on this side. So now what I'm going to do is with my eight microphones, I'm going to take this uh, coupling zone that I have found between negative 20 and positive 120 degrees, and I'm going to put half of my microphones on this side and half of my microphones on this side. And that's what I did over here. I've got half my microphones, four of them over here and four of them over here. And then here is my crossover position. And the reason I chose to do it that way is so that when I do my average over here in smart, that everything will pull back to the center. Let me see if I can show that with some of these measurements that we took, what would be a good way to do So take a look at these subwoofer measurements. So um, we're looking at microphone positions one and eight. So that's from the beginning of the audience and the very end of the audience. And this isn't exactly how they were deployed. But imagine that they would be at the beginning of the audience here, or the beginning of the coupling zone and the end of the coupling zone. And so we want to balance this out evenly because we know that we're looking for something down the middle, right? So if we put equal number of measurements, four and four, on each side of the coupling zone, we know that on one side we're going to have more traces that start going out this way. Right? And on the other side, we know we're going to have more traces that start going out this way as we move away from alignment. So we're going to have some amount of misalignment as we move away from the crossover region. We want to balance that out so that the average comes back to this center line here, right? So um, you can see that, that that's, that's kind of what I'm doing here with measurement positions 1 and 8, just to show you the extreme. So I'm going to hide this guy. And now if I show you the average, now you can see the average comes back to the middle here in the phase. And then if I show you the alignment from subaligner again, you can see that it's pretty much right on top of there. So this is the reason why if you want to try this, you need to be careful with your microphone positions. And my only recommendation is that you balance them out so that after you choose your crossover position here, you put, you do an equal number of measurements on one side and the other. And you want to try and spread them out as much as possible because the, the idea here is that all of these reflections and stuff that you see, 
that should all disappear. Uh, and only the, the same, hopefully only mostly like the direct sound from the speaker should remain. Because as we move forward and backward here, um, the path link differences from reflections will change, right? So we've got this reflection bouncing down and then coming back up. Back here though, it's gonna be slightly different, right? The reflection from the floor and, and the direct sound from the speaker. Um, and so what we hope is that all of the reflections getting into the microphone will average out and what we'll be left with here is mainly just direct sound and then we can really have a better idea of what our alignment looks like uh, over the audience in a global way instead of accidentally doing our alignment to some kind of local anomaly, some kind of local reflection like a floor bounce or a bounce off of the back wall or something like that. So I hope I wasn't too long-winded in this explanation, but let me just give a quick review. So the first thing you need to do is basically put everything into the subalign calculator here. So you put the position of your subwoofer, mains, and audience plane. And you're gonna decide on an alignment position. And that's gonna help you figure out where to put your microphones in front and behind of your alignment position. So here's my alignment position, uh, 4.8 meters. And then if I go to my first microphone position, I can see in numbers there, it says 1.37 meters. And then my last one is gonna be at 19.5 meters. So once I have my alignment position, my first mic position, my last mic position, then the rest of my position should just be spaced evenly through here. Put all of your mic positions into the coupling zone and then take your measurements, make sure you're getting solo systems at each measurement position and resetting the delay locator using your full range system. And then you can average everything together and you should be left with something like this orange guy um, that, that averages out a lot of the noise, a lot of the reflections, a lot of the local anomalies, and you can see if your alignment is working or not. Um, yes, I realize this is a lot of work, but this is the kind of thing that you, you know, might wanna do if you have an installation where you have a little bit more time and you can take eight microphone positions. Would it work with less? I don't know. I haven't tried less yet. Um, I'm also working on a method to do this live I'm gonna be testing that out soon. Um, but for now, I just wanted you to have something to try in case you're ever stuck in one of those positions and it's not good enough for you to just use subaligner and you know take a leap of faith and just assume that it's working. You really wanna see that it's working. So if you really wanna see this stuff, but, but your you know, low frequency data of your measurements is all a mess, this might be one way you could do that. Okay, I have one. I have a couple more examples for you. Um, how might this play out in a really small room? So my friend Steve in Athens was helping me take a bunch of measurements. So let's take a look at those. So here's microphone position seven and here's microphone position seven. Wow, it's pretty noisy, right? Like this is a little bit worse. Um, and long story short, I just want to tell you it didn't work out as well. There was like one reflection we just could not get out. So here is the main measurement and check this out. There's this weird wrap here in the middle that I'm pretty sure shouldn't be happening. Why do I think that? Well, anytime I see like, you know, something kind of weird in the phase trace and then it also lines up, you know, with, uh, you know, maybe a dip. And then sometimes you can connect that up to, you know, a reflection up here in the IR, but we're just looking at an average right now. But sometimes not. Sometimes you can also connect it to, you know, a dip in the coherence. Let's go back to looking at, you know, one of these solo measurements here of the main. Let me find one. So here's a little bit better example. So here we can see this big dip in the magnitude that connects with something weird happening in the phase, uh, which probably connects to, you know, uh, one of these reflections here, although this IR is a little bit uh, noisy. Let's see. So when I saw this average, I'm like, I don't believe this. I'm suspicious about this. But I also could not get an average that would remove this. So no matter what we did with the microphones, no matter where we moved them around, we tried varying them over depth, we tried varying them over height, we could not get this reflection from our 
full range speaker to go away. So there was some reflection off of a wall that was just happening at every position at about the same, about the same time, right? Um, how did we deal with this? Well, I looked at my sub measurement and I said, you know what? I'm pretty sure that this is really what's happening here in this main speaker. And how did I verify that? I, let's hide this sub measurement for a second. I exported these measurements from Subaligner, imported them into Smart here, and I see, yep, this is pretty much what's going on here. This, this is some kind of reflection that's happening in all the measurements, and so it's making it into the average. But really, this is what's happening here. So when it comes to my alignment, this is what I should be looking for, and, uh, and I can kind of ignore this, this weird thing that's happening here. So I have found, so I've done a couple of tests so far. It doesn't work every time. I think the smaller places are going to be harder, right? Um, but this is definitely, this purple guy here is definitely easier to read in any of these solo measurements that we took, right? Um, so I still feel like it was worthwhile. Okay, I have another thing to show you. This is the last thing, but I just wanted you to know if you're using some other piece of software like um, RumiQ Wizard, you can also do this. So um, I did another test with my friend Eduardo in Spain, and he was using Rita. And um, so instead of loading Rita right now, I'm just gonna load all of his measurements into RumiQ Wizard. So over here, I've got a folder of all of his measurements. Here are eight positions he took of his main and eight of the sub. So I'll pull in the main measurements. Okay, let's do a little bit of smoothing just to make this a little bit easier to look at. And part of this process is to make sure that all of these levels are met. So that's actually a pretty important step that I should have mentioned earlier. Um, when you take all of these measurements, notice here that these are all uh, pretty well matched in this low end here. And so when Ian was doing the measurements, he was adjusting the microphone gain at each position. So as we moved closer to our main, he was turning down the gain on the mic preamp little by little to just try and make all of these match. So that's the first thing I would do in here in um, RumiQ Wizard is make all of these guys match mostly around, you know, the, this, this region in here where I want to be looking at the crossover alignment. Okay. But the next step is really easy, but let me show you what happens before that. So if I open the overlay screen here, um, you can see when I look at the, all of the impulse responses on top of each other, they're not quite aligned. They're all a little bit different. And what I'm going to do now is basically replicating the step that we did in Smart, where we were going to each microphone position, and at each position we re reset the delay locator, right? But in RumiQ Wizard, we can do that really easily uh, just by clicking Time Align. So when I click Time Align, then watch all of these peaks over here. Okay, so now we have all the peaks of our main speakers aligned, um, and we do the same thing with the subs, but we don't want to automatically align all of the subs because what we need is each of our sub measurements to be aligned with their positions. So these are microphone positions one through eight, and I need each sub measurement to be aligned by the same amount at each position. Um, and the way I did that was by manually just opening up each of these, clicking the info panel, and then here where it says cumulative IR shift, that's what I did to the sub. So let me just bring in one sh sub and show you how to do that. So I'll bring the sub measurement in. And when I look at my two meter measurement here, it has a cumulative IR shift of negative 0.0086 milliseconds. Go down to my sub measurement that's at the same position and head over to its SPL and phase measurement here. Now, offset equals T. Now I can match the cumulative IR shift. Negative 0.0086. And it shifts a tiny bit, so I'm not even sure if it really mattered that much in this case, but going through the steps anyway, because in other situations where you have much larger distances, um, 
you might need to do this. So then once you have gone through these alignment steps, then back over here in all SPL, you're going to create a vector average of all of the mains and then a vector average of all of the subs. Now I've done that beforehand, so I can just open it up. Okay, so here are all of the measurements on top of each other. Let's clear the selection, and then here's the vector average of the sub and the vector average of the main. And then if we go back to overlays, and now we can look at the predicted phase of just the vector averages, vector average of the main, vector average of the sub, and now what we discover is that it looks like we have uh, potentially, potentially, matched slope, right? But 180 degrees apart. So we may have a polarity inversion here. Uh, so those are the steps you could do in um, Rumi Q Wizard. If you wanted to look at one more thing, one fun thing to do in Rumi Q Wizard is to go to the filtered IR and then filter the IR around whatever frequency is interesting for you at the moment. So we're going to look at 100 hertz, go back over to the other vector and filter it as well. 100 hertz. And now over on the overlay screen, we're going to look at the impulse response, clear everything out, look at the vector and the vector. fit to data. And now, wow, look at this thing. So maybe, I'm not totally certain here, but maybe this confirms what I was thinking, that they are potentially aligned, um, but with a polarity inversion. Okay? So the, the, the story here is not necessarily my assessment of these measurements. That could be totally wrong. But I did want you to see in just three different examples here of how you could test out creating these averages and, and maybe see if looking at average phase uh, through the coupling zone, balanced through the coupling zone, could help you really see through the noise. So please let me know if you've tried this out. Have you tried looking at average phase in the field? How did you pick your microphone positions? And please let me know if you have any suggestions for me. You know, I'm doing a lot of tests with Subaligner right now and uh, really trying to figure out how to improve it and figure out where it's working and where it can be improved. All right. Thank you.